So you asked, what is antimatter and what is its role in the laws of nature? So what antimatter is, is that uh, for every particle of matter, um, there's a corresponding partner, which is a particle of antimatter. Um, and this particle has exactly the same mass, but opposite charge and spin. So um, electrons are matter and they have positrons, which are antimatter. Uh, so the way you get from matter to antimatter is first um, you flip the charge. So you take an electron and you turn it into a positron. Um, and then you can think about um, the positron, if the electron is spinning, so that it's, if you take your right hand and you point in the direction of the spin, it points up. Um, the positron, after the charge conjugation, is still pointing up. Then you do a parity transformation, so that from going up now, the positron is spinning down. Um, and this is now the antipartner to the original electron. So to go from the particle to the antiparticle, you do a CP transformation. Um, and so when you ask, uh, what is antimatter's role in the laws of the universe, the question is, um, do the laws of nature treat this particle and this particle the same way? And the answer is they don't. Um, and one interesting thing about uh, matter and antimatter is that if you have an electron and its antiparticle, the positron, they're both massive. But when they interact, um, they annihilate and turn into two photons, which are massless. And so all of the mass gets turned into energy in the photons. So um, when matter and antimatter interact, um, all of the mass gets released as energy. And so the vast majority of what you interact with every day is made of matter. You are made of matter. Um, the Earth is made of matter. Most things are made of matter. Um, and a very, very small amount is antimatter, which is good because if you were to run into a version of yourself made of antimatter, you guys would just, all of your mass would be turned into energy and you would explode. So the question of uh, how the laws of nature interact with antimatter is very interesting. So what role does antimatter play in the laws of nature? So we know from very general um, assumptions that if we don't throw away too many things, our laws of nature um, should maintain something we call CPT invariance. And that means that if you take a system um, and you do charge conjugation, and then you do the parity flip, so you take things that are right-handed and make them left-handed, and then you do time reversal, so instead of running the system forward in time, um, you run it backwards in time. If you do all three of these things, the laws of nature should treat the original system exactly the same way as the new system that you get after you do these three transformations. Um, but going from matter to antimatter is only the first two. So it's possible, theoretically, that the laws of nature could um, treat the system differently if you only do these two things, um, but not if you do all three. And so that means that the laws of nature um, might treat matter and antimatter differently. Um, and this is very relevant um, because uh, when the universe was created, uh, if the laws of nature didn't know any difference between matter and antimatter, matter would have been produced at about the same rate that antimatter would have been produced. And that matter and antimatter swirling around in the beginning of the universe would have interacted and the mass would have been converted into energy. Um, but that's not what happened, right? In fact, for some reason, the universe preferentially chose matter over antimatter. Um, stars are made of matter, uh, the Earth is made of matter, and human beings are made of matter. Um, so uh, our existence is dependent on the fact that nature actually does treat matter and antimatter differently. Um, and we know for sure that this is true because we have experimentally measured it. So the weak force um, does treat matter and antimatter differently. The weak force violates CP. Uh, and we've experimentally measured that the weak force does this. Um, we think that the strong force might violate CP, though we've never measured any CP violation from the strong force. Um, and this open question of whether the uh, strong force violates CP is called the strong CP problem, and it's something scientists are trying to resolve. Um, but given what we know, just the weak force, um, this CP violation is actually not enough to account for the fact that the universe overwhelmingly chose matter over antimatter. So we still don't know the exact mechanism of how the universe created all of the matter without creating antimatter. Um, but we do know that there was a very, there is a very large difference because observationally today we see a huge difference between matter and antimatter. But in our experiments, we only see a very small difference. Um, and this problem is called baryogenesis. So how did we create all of the matter we see today? So to summarize, 
Um, antiparticles are different from each other. Um, we have matter and antimatter, where a particle of matter and a particle of antimatter have the same mass but opposite charge and opposite spin orientations. Um, and the laws of nature we know do treat matter and antimatter differently, but we don't know why there's so much more matter now uh, than antimatter. Uh, and that question is a question that scientists are working on answering. Thank you.